TV4, the community television network. My name is Mike Connolly, and I teach a course at the University of Southern Maine in Modern Irish History and Literature. About this time of year, uh, as people are, are thinking about St. Patrick's Day, the thought about Ireland, and in particular Northern Ireland, and the violence that has gone through that community for the last 20 years comes to their, to their thoughts. Today in Portland, we're lucky enough to have two of the young people from Northern Ireland, in particular from the city of Belfast, visiting with us. They're studying in Westbrook High School, and uh, they're with us here today. I'd like to introduce you to Debbie Dempster of Belfast and Michael McGibbon, also of Belfast, and to welcome them both very much. Mike, could you explain why are you here in the Portland area? Well, I'm involved with uh, an exchange program a joint exchange program run by Westbrook High School and cr a Chris organization in Northern Ireland. Chris is an acronym for Community Relations in Schools and it is a government sponsored organization. It, it brings Catholics and Protestants together, uh, senior Protestants and Catholics, 16 to 18 year olds and younger primary school children from the ages of 9 to 11. Uh, Debbie, uh, are you also a member of this uh, Chris organization? Yes, um, I've been going to it for about two years. I have, but we, we all started off. I first met Michael, and we went away on a group of four weekends together. And the first weekend was really good because we talked about politics, and we ended up shouting at each other and fighting, and we were put off in, into little rooms of our own, and Catholics and Protestants together. And it was strange to see how much of a, of a, big, of a bigotry it was because I was really against Catholics and Catholics were really against me but as the weekend went on we were all under the one roof we had to get on so we found out that we were just people as much as everybody else never mind being Catholic and Protestant. What types of programs uh, does Chris run and how does Chris affect Portland? Well the senior the senior project uh, this is the second year of the senior project last year two fellows came over uh, a Protestant boy and a Catholic boy this year uh, Debbie and myself came across and it also runs an exchange program where teenage students, well sorry, 11 year old students come over during the summer for six weeks and are distributed over Maine to separate families. So the young people that will be with us here this summer, younger than yourselves, uh, and have been coming here for the last two or three summers will also be from this CRIS program in Belfast and in Northern Ireland. Yes, it brings them together, puts them in a situation where they, they can't run back home to their mum and dads. So they're stuck here for the summer. They have a good time and they get to know each other and they have a different point of view which really needs to be started at a young age. And they don't face the prejudices which they uh -huh. face in Northern Ireland. Uh -huh. Because here you can be a Catholic or a Protestant, go where you like, but back home you can't. Mm -hmm. What do your friends back in Belfast think about you being active in this program? Well, to start off, whenever um, I was in sixth form back home, that's the last two years of high school, um, I went away on the weekends and came back. 
and told my friends about it. A friend, Rosemary and I went, went away and I came back and said, you wouldn't believe it, we got talking to these Catholics about this, about Jerry Adams, about Ian Paisley, and we discussed this shooting and this killing and this bombing. I said, we've just got it all off our chest what we thought of each other. And it was fantastic, it was really good. It's different to see what they think of us. And my friends going, you didn't. They couldn't, they couldn't believe it, and they, they really wanted to know more about it. We tried to get stuff and talks organized, but it didn't really succeed because of the different schools and everything. It was too far, far apart, and it take, took time to organize. But my friends back home were really interested in finding out about how the weekends developed. What about yourself, Michael? Did, uh, did your interest and your activity in Chris meet with uh, acceptance in your own community? Well, I was involved with other projects for, uh, apart from Chris, uh, mainly bringing Protestant and Catholic people together. This is another organization uh, that has an acronym PACE, which stands for Protestant Catholic Encounter. And this brought teenagers together, and brought them together in a, a situation in which they had to work together. Would you say that uh, either of you can see any positive benefits coming out of this type of program, Chris or Pace? Definitely. Yes. Yeah, uh, definitely. The Chris, uh, Chris entirely. This is their third year, so it's mm -hmm. a fairly new organization, and they're expanding very rap rapidly. At the minute, they only take into uh, East Be schools from East Belfast, mm -hmm. and they're expanding to West Belfast next year. So more schools and more students will be involved. And the police and everything's involved as well because the police help with transport. So it brings the police, Catholics and Protestants together, which beforehand there was a big breakdown because people didn't like the police. Mm -hmm. You're both at Westbrook High School uh, and you've more or less completed what would be the equivalent of high school education in Belfast. So you've seen things from both sides of the Atlantic. How would you compare your experience this year at Westbrook High School with your experience back home? It's very relaxing here. There's not as much pressure uh, put on the individual. That's true. Here. When it comes to exams and stuff, there's definitely not as much pressure. We have more tests here. We have back home. You don't. You just work for two years, have a Christmas exam, and then at the end of two years, you get your big exam, and that's your bit of paper that will get you your job or get you into university or college or whatever. But here, it's more relaxed, so it is. What happens when a person is approaching that big exam? <gasps> it's terrible. It's, oh, very nerve-wracking. It's awful. The, the last month before the exam, you just have to cram in everything you know in the last two years. years. Now mm -hmm. here they have the idea of constant assessment, which means you, you might get quizzes or, grade, uh -huh. or grades every week. Do you think that's uh, a preferable system? Yes, definitely far better because at least you're not cramming it all in because it's just not, it's not, not good for the system. Besides <coughs> academics, what's what's uh, it like for you in high school life, like here in Port here in Portland and Westbrook as compared to Belfast? Oh, completely different. W you're involved more so here with school organisations, uh, whereas if you want to do anything social, you go to a bar in Northern Ireland where all your friends are. Mm -hmm. So the 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 drinking age then is one thing that's that would be quite different. It, it, uh, the drinking age is eighteen but you can find 16-year-olds in the bar. Mm -hmm. What else do you find different about the social life here, would you say, uh, as compared to back home in Belfast? Um, you, can, you, can go to certain, you can go anywhere you like. Back home, you couldn't go to certain bars in Anderson's town, or they couldn't come up to, up to the center of Belfast because people just know as soon as you open your mouth or your name or where you live, what kind of what religion you are, and they sort of would look at you funny or start talking about you. At least here you can go wherever you like. Did you feel any tension when you were living in Belfast as far as being able to go into certain areas or, or being restricted from? Well, you learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. We were born and raised in Belfast, you so you're not really told not to go into a certain area, you just, but you just learn not to go in. Uh -huh. You just don't go in there. Because you see your friends, they don't go in. Uh -huh. uh, you don't follow them. Uh -huh. I come from Castlereagh, and I, I just wouldn't go to the Falls Road on a Friday night or a Saturday night. It just, you just don't, even by bus, even if it was to take the car, you wouldn't take the car. You just, just don't go there. It's 
Have, have either of you, through living here in Portland, discovered something about yourself that has surprised you? Um, I've discovered that I have determination to stick things out, and I'm, I'm more, I can speak freer, freer now than when I did back home, and I'm able to say what I like. Will that be, uh, will you be able to take that back with you when you go to Belfast? I, ho I hope I will. I hope to use the, the freedom that I have back home, the freedom that I've gained here, I hope to use it back home because then I can say what I like, I can put forward ideas, hopefully somebody else will carry on or I can try and carry on with people's help. Mm -hmm. Could there be a danger involved in that, do you think? There, there is a danger mm -hmm. always in Belfast when you express your views, mm -hmm. even if you're a majority or a minority, uh, your, your rules spe specify what religion you really are and you can't really go halfway. You've been here now for several months. What do you miss the most about home? Nothing. <laughs> I, I really miss uh, nightlife, Friday, Friday and Saturday night. Oh, well, of course you miss your friends and stuff, but not really anything else, really. The food's good over here, the people are nice, weather's okay. I'm fed up with the snow, but anyway. <laughs> I like it over here, I really do. Did you get much snow uh, in Belfast? We got some it? snow, but not as much as snow we got here. Snow in the morning, melted in the afternoon. That was about it. <laughs> and here you get it for, and it lasts for a few months. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us a little bit, if you would, each of you, about what it was like to be raised in Belfast and, and refer to your own neighborhood. Perhaps, uh, Debbie, you talk a little bit about Castle Ray, what it was like to grow up uh, there in Castle Ray. Huh. Well, Castle Ray is just in the outskirts of the countryside, although it's been developed now, but years and years ago it was just in the outskirts of the countryside. It really is just a homely little community. There's not that much violence or anything. Or I think you should explain uh, that by homely it's a different meaning, I think, in Ireland as it is here. It, homely in, in Ireland has a positive meaning, like uh, uh -huh. what you would expect from home, not ugly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh no, it's not ugly at all, yeah. no. Um, as far as the troubles <coughs> go, I hardly see anything at all. It only takes me about 20 minutes to get in the centre of Belfast and um, to get across town only takes me about half an hour. Did you feel isolated at all from the, uh, from the violence of inner city Belfast? Yes, but it's better that way. You don't want to be stuck in it. Uh -huh. So you don't. I, I was just in outskirts. If anything happened, it was on the news, I seen it. You know where the places are. But the, the troubles never affected me. What about your schooling experience growing up in that, in that area? What kinds of schools did you go to? Um, for, first of all, I went to a private school. And then I went to uh, Orangefield Primary, which is mixed boys and girls, Protestant. And then to, I went to an all-girls school for seven years, Orangefield Girls High School. And uh, we, we really didn't have anything to do the school was just school. The problems were the problems. If they affected you, you know, that was just it. It just so happened it had to be you. It's too bad. But you learn to live with it. It's just, you turn the television on, somebody's shot or mm. somebody's been blown up. Oh, oh well. You hear Carry so many on times. eating your dinner. Mm -hmm. You know. You mentioned that you went to a mixed school, mm -hmm. but that was mixed uh, boy and girl. Boy and, boy and girl. Did you ever have any Catholic students in, in studying with you? No. Did you ever give that a thought? No, not at that age I didn't. But when I got into secondary school, yes, I did. Did you ever ask questions at home about uh, why that was the case? Yes, I did, and I always got told that it was just, well, the Catholics are just stay on that side and the Protestants just stay on that side. There's nothing you can do about it, Debbie. But then you get fed up hearing that and you want to do something because it helps. That, that's what one thing is going to have to be done. And Michael would agree with mm. me that integration of schools, Catholics and Protestants. Michael, you, how far away did, uh, were you raised from where Debbie uh, was raised? I was raised in the city centre and raised in with the Troubles. I was in a sort of a very mixed place, uh, a so, uh, small community surrounded by Protestant communities. I'm a Catholic myself. Um, and every time you would always hear about troubles, but y you may not see the troubles, but they always happen clo nearby. The school I went to was very close into the city centre as well. It was a uh, primary school. 
and it was all Catholic school. Even though you were in a mixed community? Yeah, mixed community. You still, your religion, Frontier. you go to a Catholic school if you're a Catholic, Protestant, likewise. Do you see this in the same light as Debbie as a major problem? Yeah, you learn ev everything in school you pick up from your friends, all prejudices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your parents as well. You know, it's the way you're brought up. You know, but when it comes to the marching season, all the Protestant kids go out and their mothers take them out to watch the bands, the 12th marches, the 12th of July. And th there's kids sitting there in the pavement that don't even know why the bands are marching by. And they're just brought up with it. The, the phrase, the marching season, is something that anyone from Northern Ireland would understand immediately. But would, would you explain a little bit what you mean by the marching season? The marching season is the uh, first three weeks in July. Mm -hmm. and it, July the 12th is when they actually march. And it's the cam commemoration of the Battle of the Boyne, where King William's forces beat the Catholic forces in Ireland and rule Ulster, which is now Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Now this was going on 300 years, years ago. ago. Yes, yeah. and they celebrate it every year. And this year is 300th anniversary. Uh -huh. So and there probably, most likely, will be trouble uh -huh. on this 12th. And when it came up to the Anglo-Irish Agreement, um, there was uh, when the band started to march, they were saying that they couldn't go through certain areas because they would aggravate the Catholics. And the Protestants' point was, well, we've been doing this for over 250 years, why stop now, sort of thing. And then that sort of got things going. What's your individual memories of the marching season? I never understood what the marching season was. My mother always brought me and my two sisters to watch the marches. Um, we sat outside a television station and watched the marches go by. And then in school, uh, I just heard from ear what the marches were actually were and then after a while I didn't like going because I knew it was uh, Protestants. Mm. Debbie, what about yourself growing up in the Protestant tradition and these marches are definitely part of the tr Protestant tradition. What, mm -hmm. what did you feel about them as you were growing up? Well, until I started to get politically aware that I didn't I just went out to watch. It was just a family thing. Grandmother, grandfather, everybody goes and sits and watches these bands go by and you end up with a sore butt and stuff like this and you're hungry and you want to go home. And if the weather was good, you got sunburnt. But that was about it. And then whenever I realized that what it was about, I didn't bother going because I just, it was boring after a while. What uh, do you think now when you when you go to the marches, either on the 1st of July or the 12th of July, or later in August when, in fact, Catholics go out and march as well. Um, what thoughts go through your mind now that, as you put it, you are politically aware? It's, it's really a show of power from each side. Mm -hmm. it's, this, this is how many supporters we have got, and let's see how many supporters you have got yeah. in August. Mm -hmm. And some real staunch unionists, people go out and really cheer everybody on and, and there's little kids in the bands that go past and those kids just don't know why they're there. They're just there because their parents have brought them there. Their grandfather have told them about the unionists and they're this, they're good, they're good. Debbie, would you explain when you mention Ulster unionism, what exactly does that mean? Ulster union, unionism is the Protestant side it's the Unionist Party, the DUP. It's run by Ian Paisley, and he's helped by Peter Robinson, but I recently heard Peter Robinson resigned. For why, I don't know, because I haven't heard. Um, it's, it's just the, the Protestants. That's what they look up to. It's what they follow, the Unionist Ulster. What's the goal of Ulster Unionism? Ulster Unionism? To have a union of Protestant people with no Catholics. And does it have anything to do, would you say, with Great Britain? Yes, but since the Anglo-Irish Agreement, there's a bit of a dispute over that because the British government have made an agreement with the south of Ireland to rule over Northern Ireland. And the Unionists didn't like this because they weren't asked about it. They weren't approached to talk about it. And uh, they, they didn't like it at all. So there's really two parts of Ulster Unionism. One is in Northern Ireland itself, and uh, the other is, has to do has with... has to do with England. Now, Michael, on the other side uh, of the coin, there would be Irish Republicanism. Yeah, we have a political, for, uh, political party known as Sinn Féin. And it's, so it, it is the political wing of the IRA, the Irish Revolutionary Army. And 
they mainly stress all Catholic point of views, extreme as they are. It's the same with the unionists. Unionists, they have extreme values as well. Uh -huh. For American people listening, and in particular Irish Americans, the question that might be foremost in their minds would be, what is the cause of the troubles in Ireland today? How would you answer that question? Political leaders. Yeah. It's all politically motivated. So it is, although it's got to do with religion as well, but still, it's all political. Religion plays uh, too much of a role uh -huh. in the politics. Yeah. Of Northern Ireland. Would you agree with those who say that it's strictly a religious war or a religious struggle? No, it's also an economic struggle. As well. Uh, the Unionists in Northern Ireland do not want to be a part of the Republic of Ireland because the economic Repu the economics of the Republic are not that well at the moment, whereas investments look very nice for uh, Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Another question that Irish Americans always, often seem to have is um, about a united Ireland. How would each of you see uh, the prospect of a united Ireland? If there was to be a united Ireland tomorrow, there would be a civil war. There just would, because the Protestants would no way want it. They would just up and out rise to the streets. Uh -huh. And plus they would be led on by Ian Paisley and Peter Robinson and stuff like that. He gets the crowd aroused. and. Just Ulster. Ulster says no, and everybody out in the street and fight. From a unionist perspective or a Protestant perspective, what are the fears of a united Ireland? Why why would people fear such a thing so much as to fight against it? Because they think that everybody from the south is going to come up, and eventually, whether they want a united Catholic Ireland or united Ireland, it depends. But the frightened of the everybody from the south coming up and putting us out. Michael, how would you answer the question, um, how do you see a united Ireland? Well, being brought up a Catholic, we see Northern Ireland as uh, a part of the landmass of Ireland in the entirety. We don't see it as a separate country, whereas it has been a separate country for 300 years, ruled by a different government. What about Debbie's fears and the fears of the Protestant community that, uh, in fact, an, a united Ireland in a united Ireland, the Protestants of the North would be dominated by the Catholics of the South. How would you address well, that? Well, there is basis for, for her fears, because um, as what happened with the uh, Protestants taking over Northern Ireland, that was a reversal of the rules, where the Protestants got better jobs than the Catholics and held the Catholics down. What kinds of things could be done, do you think, that uh, could allay the fears or put to rest the fears of Debbie, the Protestant community uh, in Northern Ireland about a united Ireland. Is, any, is anything? Well, it should start off in childhood, really. Mm -hmm. Start getting prejudices, really, when they, in their origin. Yes. So start integrated schools seems to be the best way. Uh, and religion and schools should be separate, you know, because priests and ministers have a great influence in the upbringing of children and what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And I also think that the, poli the politicians of Northern Ireland need to get together and talk. Forget that Jerry Adams and Ian Paisley, forget who they are, but what they're there for. What happens when they get together and talk these they, days? They just don't There's, get together. It's, it's just an, an all-out argument. It's an all-out argument. They just don't get on at all. What are your ages? I'm 20. I'm 19. So, in a sense, uh, you were both born just as the present round of the Troubles were starting, around 1968, 1969. Yeah. Yes. How have these influenced your lives? We don't, know, we don't know what it's like to live in peace until I've come yeah. here. It's, it's just natural uh -huh. to hear about in television that maybe three streets away someone got shot. Yeah. Can you foresee a Northern Ireland uh, at peace? No. Maybe not in this decade, or maybe not in our lifetime, but there may well be. With the Anglo-Irish Agreement, um, with the Irish government having s some say mm -hmm. in the running of Northern Ireland politics, uh, there may be some way through the Republic trying to get the views across that they don't want to take over Northern Ireland entirely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the second year that uh, students have visited Westbrook High School. and. Uh, whether you know it or not, you're making a, a great deal of friends uh, in, in this area. 
as Tom and Paul, your predecessors, did last year. People who have met you might wonder, and people in general might ask themselves the question, would it be safe to come over to Belfast to visit you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of course. Do you see many American tourists in Belfast? We haven't seen American tur tourists in Belfast uh, in a long time, but there is more Europeans coming over. Uh, Europeans as in French people, Spanish people, yes. in the last few years. But it's not that bad, as I keep saying, it's not that bad as, as the media makes it out to be. If your friends came over to visit you uh, next year in Belfast, what would you take them to see? Everywhere, the good bits, the bad bits, the bars. The bars. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, nightclubs well, and everything. What are the good bits for you? The good bits for me? Just everything. Just going out and the bars and everything are open all day. Town, and I would take them to the, the restricted areas, you know, <laughs> and the Protestant areas, just to show, just to actually show them what, what it's like. Let me ask you each just one last question before we finish. Um, do you see your future as being one lived out in Belfast and in Northern Ireland? Well, for me, uh, when I go back to Northern Ireland, I'll be studying at Queen's University. So for the next three, four years, I'll still be tied up in education. So after that, uh, I'm not too sure what kind of field I would want my job in. Uh, but Belfast doesn't look like a good prospect. England looks a better prospect. Do many of your friends emigrate from a Belfast? Yeah, a lot of Catholic boys and girls emigrate to places like Australia, America, or go to London for a job. Debbie, what about yourself? Is your future going to be lived out in Belfast and Northern Ireland? Well, hopefully whenever I get home, I'd like to start a career in uh, broadcasting and television media work. And, hope, and if, if I can't get a job in that or a career started, I think I would like to come back to America to go to college. You've both made friends here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What memories will you be taking back with you when you go to Belfast? Uh, the family I'm staying with, mostly. Yeah. And there's two girls, two sisters in the family I'm staying with are pregnant, and before I leave, they will have two children. And Debbie, yourself, what memories will you be taking I'll back? I'll take home memories of my family, the Kimballs, and uh, the memories of school, and just general life, and everything else I couldn't stand television. <laughs> you, you both attended a Kaylee dance last week, and I want to say you did a fine job. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed very much chatting with these two people from Northern Ireland, Debbie Dempster and Mike McGibbon. We're very fortunate to have people like Debbie and Mike visiting us in our neighborhoods and they show exactly the type of people that are living in Belfast and in Northern Ireland. Uh, this has been Mike Connolly. I've been very happy to be here and looking forward to uh, having other programs in this Irish series. Extraordinary Television, the Community Television Network.